We are here today to follow the Durham Police on a police raid, which, if I had a choice, isn't really something I'd be a part of. It's the fact that I've been on the other side of a police raid twice. I was arrested for something that I was never charged with, but the documentary that we are filming is about weed and we have to show every aspect of it. And this is something that is a part of it as much as everything else. The police have had a tip off about a suspected cannabis grow. We've gone to the magistrates with that information. The magistrates have to be happy with the information that we give to them for them to um, give us a warrant. Mm -hmm. Because if we knocked on the door and somebody had a cannabis grow in there, the chances of them letting us in are, are very slim. There's a strong smell of cannabis coming from the address. Members of the public believe that there's cannabis being grown at the address and that drugs are almost ready to be cropped. Ken and John, if you guys want to go to the back, you're going to force entry to the door. Yeah, uh... This is quite an interesting angle. Been on number four. Am I? You've been on 20 before? No, I've been raided twice before. You've been raided twice? Yeah. Oh. So you walk into a local's pub and the music stops. <laughs> if you're caught possessing cannabis, you could face up to five years in prison. If it's with intent to supply, 14 years. I've no idea what we're going to find, but I feel uneasy about being here. The size? Set, set the oh. What round? Once we arrive, ten coppers and the firearms officer make their way into the building in search of the cannabis grow. Can't smell any weed. What's the situation? Um, so well, the house itself is in a poor condition inside. Um, it's obviously there's a few dogs in there, and it's like the dogs have taken hold of the property. Really, um, there is people living in there, albeit there's not, there's not people in at the minute. Sorry, I won't do. Won't do. I can't work out if they've found what they're looking for, but. After a 40-minute search, we return to the station and I get to see what they picked up. So there's the results of your raid. That's the result of it. There's, there's, not, there's not an awful lot in there. Um, people may look at it and sort of think, well, it's an absolute waste of time. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the information that comes to it's the information that's come to us and we've acted on it. Because well, if someone just smoked someone smoking a spliff, that wouldn't be reason enough for you to obtain a warrant to raid an address, no, would it? I, I mean, if... It, if, if we knew what was in there, we don't know until we go and do it. Um, it's obviously a lot better for what us. What I'm trying to distinguish is if I'm smoking a spiff in my back garden and someone smells it and, and goes to a police station, am I then likely to be raided on the chance that there might be a grow in my house? It depends what they're saying. Are they smelling it intermittently? Mm. Um, is the smell there all the time? Somebody may be under the impression that there's a lot more in there than what there actually is. Yeah. So what's turned out on this occasion. Until we go into an address, we don't know. The person in question could be brought in and charged, but in this instance, they receive a warning for possession. Quite a lot of effort for a small amount of weed. The police thought they were going to bust a massive grow. I almost felt a bit sorry for them. Though in their defence, a real change is underway here, and the police are being encouraged to change the way they police cannabis. Durham's Police and Crime Commissioner has been defending the decision that officers in the county will no longer prosecute cannabis users who grow the drug for their own consumption. Ron Hogg says officers will focus on tackling drugs gangs and dealers rather than prosecuting people who cultivate the drug on a small scale. I've taken a short drive to meet Durham's Police and Crime Commissioner, Ron Hogg, the man spearheading the new strategy. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm Stephen. Good to meet you, Stephen. Ron. Ron, nice to meet you. Cheers. What is your stance on it? And the police force today, we actually uh, shape our responses in what we call threat, risk and harm. And really, so an individual cannabis user doesn't pose a great threat, risk, or indeed do they do any particular harm to individuals. So therefore, from that point of view, let, let, let's not actually go there and let's not tackle that. What we want to focus on are the guys who are making the big money out of it, you know, the, the suppliers, the producers of, of cannabis, and these are the guys we want to take out. I'm shocked to hear that from you. Uh, well, no, it, it's... <laughs> I really am. You seem like a decent bloke, and I know, like, you can't tie every copy with the same brush, yeah. but I am, honestly, you're being, but you are, you're, you're, you're showing genuine compassion, mm. which is not, not, to be honest, not what I expected.